If you're like me, you love Child's Play too. It's pretty incredible. They gave Don Mancini more creative control over the script. They went bigger and better than the previous film. Chucky became more of a character. Uh, it's overall a really terrific slasher sequel. If you're also like me, whenever you watch this movie on DVD or when it's streaming, you might get the feeling that it's missing something. I would always remember specific scenes very, very vividly, and I swore they existed. But whenever I popped in the DVD, they were nowhere to be found. Was it a false memory? Was it the Mandela effect? No. The Mandela effect is stupid. You're just misremembering things. But I wasn't misremembering anything. It turns out most of the scenes I remembered were actually in the USA Network and Sci-Fi Channel TV cuts of the film. What scenes am I talking about? Well, let's find out. As always, I'm not gonna dwell on little things like violence being cut out or cursing being changed, unless I think it matters. I'm gonna focus on uh, the big changes and scenes that stood out to me. If you want a detailed breakdown, there's a website called bootlegcomparisons.com. They've got a very detailed list of all the changes. So without further ado, let's get into Child's Play 2. We now return to Child's Play 2 on the USA Movie. The film opens up the same, but things change when we get to Chucky being completed by the engineers. In the TV cut, the one guy lands differently and has less blood on him, which is standard for these types of cuts. After this, there's an extra scene of the two businessmen in the dark, and they hear Chucky walking around. Where are the emergency lights, Madison? What was that? What? Listen. You're crazy. Shh. I heard something. There's also some added dialogue between Andy and the child psychologist, uh, and it even comes with very obvious ADR. Got any yellow? You've been peeking at my hand. Uh, what do you want me to do with the doll? Stick it up your ass. Stick it in your ear. I like this little moment where the uh, businessman is all upset because things have gone horribly wrong and uh, Chucky tries to cheer him up a little bit. So I knew when I saw this back in the day that there were extra scenes of the foster parents debating taking Andy in because they're not sure based off everything he's been through, if they're equipped for it or not. There's even an extra moment if they ask him if he's okay after he sees the Play Pal truck. Also, I specifically remember when he pulls up to the house saying he's never lived in a house, only apartments. I remember that scene so well for some reason. And again, every time I pop this movie in uh, the DVD player or watch it streaming on some app, it's gone, and I'm, I really thought I made it up. But no, I didn't. It's here. I never lived in a house before. Just apartments. So in the theatrical cut, the uh, business guy is calling up his lady friend and saying he's going to get some vodka for her. But in the TV cut, he actually calls his wife first, then his lady friend. So that means this guy is a uh, cheating asshole. And you know what they say. Cheating is bad. I personally think cheating is bad. You shouldn't do it when you're married or in your 30s. It's just a lot to manage and it gets real complicated. I mean, it's wrong. It's wrong and you shouldn't do it. Anyways, there's an extra scene of Chucky rummaging through a briefcase to get info on Andy. I'm guessing this was cut because they wanted to wait a little longer before they showed him moving around too much. But since they had the footage, they might as well put it back in for the TV cut. There is a whole added scene of the foster parents getting upset that they were turned down for an adoption again. This is actually pretty important. It really humanizes these two characters, so you kind of feel bad for them later when they inevitably get killed by Chucky. And there's even another scene with them. After Andy's first encounter with Chucky, Bill expresses his worry about Andy and how, again, they're not really equipped to deal with this type of kid, but he reluctantly keeps going along with it. Uh, we even get a really cool uh, shot of the basement window cracked open, letting us know that Chucky escaped. That way it's not jarring when we just see his feet dangling at the bottom of the school bus. Also, when he gets to school, they never show you what Chucky wrote on Andy's paper. So we have no idea why the teacher is yelling at Andy. It's a little confusing if you haven't seen the film before. Fast forwarding to the factory scene toward the end, the scene with Andy going through the uh, eye punching uh, machine is drawn out way longer. He's a, he's really hesitant to go through the machine 
in this version of the film. In the theatrical version, he hesitates for a second and runs right through it. But I guess since they were cutting out all the kills and whatnot at this point, they just extended this scene a little bit longer to fill the runtime. Originally, Kyle gives Chucky the finger when she puts him through whatever that machine was that was inserting limbs into the dolls and melting them. I don't know what was going on there. But anyway, she gave him the finger. Obviously, you can't put that on basic cable. So they came up with a uh, workaround where they instead added a cheesy action one-liner for her. The ending with Kyle and Andy actually plays out a little bit longer. Here, we actually see them talking instead of the voiceover over the wide shot that we get in the theatrical cut. So it kind of pads that out a little bit. And I think they have a few other lines of dialogue here. And finally, we get to the last scene. I've had this scene burned into my memory since I first saw this movie. And up until recently, I convinced myself that I was misremembering it because it is not on the DVD. It does not stream. Now, what we're about to see is very similar to what happens in the beginning of Child's Play 3. So I thought, okay, Tony, you're just mixing it up because they used to marathon these. They would play like one after another every night on USA. Sometimes I think they play back to back. Child's Play 3, tomorrow on USA. So it's reasonable to think that I misremembered and put the two movies together in my head. But no! I was right. The TV version does have an ending where a piece of Chucky gets into the machine, which then leads to a new good guy doll head being made and smiling. From what I could tell, this was going to be the end of the film, but they cut it out. Part three has an opening that is very similar, but different. I'm so happy that I know I'm not crazy and that this scene actually exists. Also, whoever edited the TV cut, they didn't do the freeze frame early enough you can kind of see like a puppeteer or some crew person just standing in the background toward the very end of it. Uh, they should have they should have freeze framed it just a little bit sooner, but whatever. Anyway, that is my review of Child's Play 2's TV cut. It has all the scenes you remember. Again, I remember more stuff with the foster parents. I remember a couple more things with Andy. And again, I really remember that ending. And it's so funny to think when you grow up with movies on basic cable, like you remember those versions the most because they're the ones you watch the most usually. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's a pretty decent TV cut. They didn't change anything too wacky. Nothing was really crazy in it. Usually I title these videos, the TV cut makes no sense. This one makes sense. I just thought it was interesting that it has some scenes that stand out more than the theatrical cut does. But anyway, if you want to know more about TV cuts or unreleased work print cuts of films, I've reviewed a bunch on this channel. I did Halloween 2's TV cut. I did Halloween H2O's TV cut. I did the Halloween Resurrection work print cut, both versions. I also did John Carpenter's The Things TV cut. I did the Alien 3 work print. That is actually the fourth Alien 3 video I've done altogether. And I also did a work print cut for Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from 1994 and Hellraiser Bloodline. I'm really enjoying doing these uh, little solo videos where I look at these alternate cuts of films. It's a lot of fun. So anyway, check those out and check out our main show. We put out a new podcast episode every Monday. Uh, we talk about movies new or old and sometimes film topics and it's always a blast. It's available on this channel or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, so yes, check that out. Please like, share, and subscribe. And hey, if you like it here, consider becoming a channel member for $2. You get a bunch of bonus videos. If you want more, head over to Patreon for $5. We have all the bonus videos and commentary tracks. And for $10, we have exclusive wallpapers every month and exclusive live streams. Speaking of live streams, I'm also on Twitch. So yes, check out all of those. Thank you for joining me on this fun little Child's Play 2 adventure. Also, yesterday was the anniversary of it. I saw Don Mancini posting about it. That was a total coincidence. Much like yesterday was the anniversary of Nightmare on Elm Street. And our next regular episode is going to be Nightmare on Elm Street. So look forward to that. And this weekend, I'll be at Monster Mania in Oaks, Pennsylvania. So come by the table and say hi to me there. 
Goodbye, everyone. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.